winter has arrived, and while most gardeners are hanging up their tools and retreating indoors, the most transformative soil building work of the entire year is just beginning. Your soil isn't resting during these cold months, it's either slowly degrading, losing structure, and fertility with every freeze-thaw cycle, or it's actively regenerating, building the biological foundation that will make next spring's garden your most productive ever. The difference between these two outcomes comes down to one revolutionary technique that combines ancient wisdom with modern soil science. DIY clay ferment. This living amendment transforms winter from a period of soil decline into a season of profound regeneration, and I'm about to show you exactly how to harness its power. Clay ferment is fundamentally different from every other soil amendment you've used because it works on multiple levels simultaneously. At its core, it's a fermented mixture of fine clay particles, organic materials, and beneficial microorganisms that have been activated through controlled fermentation. The clay component acts as a mineral storehouse and provides surfaces for microbial colonization, the organic matter feeds the biological activity, and the fermentation process creates a living culture of beneficial bacteria, fungi, and enzymes that remain active even in cold soil temperatures. This isn't just feeding your soil, it's inoculating it with a complete ecosystem optimized for winter conditions. You know, the winter advantage of clay ferment really comes from understanding what happens in soil during those cold months. Traditional amendments like compost and manure, well, they largely go dormant when temperatures drop, their biological activity grinds to a near halt. But clay ferment, on the other hand, contains cold-adapted microorganisms. These are selected through the fermentation process specifically because they thrive in cooler conditions. These organisms, they continue working through the winter, processing organic matter, building soil aggregates, and creating the stable humus that forms the foundation of truly healthy soil. The clay particles themselves, they provide thermal mass that moderates soil temperature swings, protecting the very microbes that are doing this transformative work. Creating effective clay ferment starts with selecting the right clay. You need pure, mineral-rich clay without additives or contaminants. Bentonite clay and kaolin clay both work excellently and are available affordably from pottery supply stores, farm supply outlets, or online sources. Look for food-grade or agricultural-grade clay rather than cosmetic clay, as these grades ensure purity and mineral content. You'll need about 2 pounds of clay for a basic batch that will treat 100 square feet of garden space. The finer the clay particles, the greater the surface area for microbial colonization, so powdered clay works better than chunky clay. The organic component requires materials rich in diverse nutrients and readily colonized by beneficial microorganisms. Rice bran is absolutely ideal. It's packed with B vitamins, minerals, and oils that beneficial microbes love, and it ferments quickly and completely. You'll need about 4 pounds of bran for your batch. Additionally, gather about 2 pounds of quality finished compost or aged leaf mold to serve as your microbial inoculant, bringing diverse beneficial species to the fermentation. The secret activators that transform this mixture from interesting to extraordinary are molasses and sea salt. Unsulfured blackstrap molasses provides the simple sugars that kickstart fermentation while adding trace minerals and iron. The small amount of unrefined sea salt, just two tablespoons per batch, provides essential minerals and creates the slightly saline environment that favors beneficial fermentation bacteria while suppressing potential pathogens. All right, folks. Finally, you need clean, dechlorinated water for your project. If you're using tap water, just let it sit out overnight so the chlorine can evaporate, or, if you've got it, rainwater or well water are great alternatives. Now, let's dive into preparing your solution. You'll want to begin your clay ferment in a 5-gallon bucket that's scrupulously clean, but not sterilized. It's important to avoid harmful bacteria while preserving those beneficial organisms. Start by dissolving 1 cup of molasses and 2 tablespoons of sea salt in 1 gallon of warm water. Stir it thoroughly until everything is completely dissolved. This sugar salt solution becomes your fermentation activator. Moving on. 
In a separate container, you'll want to slowly add your clay powder to another gallon of water. Keep stirring constantly to prevent any clumping. The clay will form a smooth, pourable slurry, and it should have the consistency of thin pancake batter. Alright, so now you'll want to combine the clay slurry with your molasses solution in the 5-gallon bucket making sure to mix it really thoroughly. Next, just add your rice bran or wheat bran gradually while stirring, and try to ensure it's evenly distributed throughout the mixture. And finally, go ahead and add your compost or leaf mold mixing until you end up with a uniform, thick but pourable mixture. The consistency you're aiming for should be kinda like a smoothie, thick enough that the particles stay suspended, but still thin enough to pour. If you find it's too thick, just add dechlorinated water a cup at a time, but if it's too thin, simply add a bit more bran. Now, you'll want to cover the bucket loosely with a cloth secured with a rubber band, or you can use a lid that's not tightly sealed. Fermentation produces carbon dioxide that needs to escape, after all. Place the bucket somewhere with stable temperatures between 50 and 70 degrees Fahrenheit. Basements, garages, or even outdoors in mild winter climates all work perfectly. Stir the mixture vigorously once daily to incorporate oxygen and ensure even fermentation. Within 24 to 48 hours, you'll notice the mixture becoming more liquid as fermentation breaks down the bran, and it will develop a pleasant, slightly sweet, earthy smell, never putrid or offensive. The fermentation process takes 7 to 14 days depending on temperature, with warmer conditions speeding the process. You'll know fermentation is complete when the mixture stops bubbling when stirred, the smell becomes mellow and earthy rather than sweet, and the texture becomes uniform and smooth. The liquid may separate slightly on top. This is normal and beneficial. The finished ferment should smell like good soil with a hint of sweetness, never rotten or sulfurous. If you detect off odors, something went wrong and you should start fresh, ensuring all containers and ingredients were clean. Applying clay ferment in winter requires understanding how it works in cold soil. The ideal application window is when soil temperatures are between 35 and 50 degrees Fahrenheit, cold enough that most soil biology is dormant but not so frozen that the ferment cannot penetrate. In most climates, this means applying in late fall before a hard freeze or during winter thaws when the soil is workable. You can even apply to snow-covered beds if you can work the snow aside to reach the soil. The insulation actually helps. For raised beds and in-ground gardens, dilute your finished ferment at a ratio of one part ferment to three parts water. Pour or spray this diluted mixture directly onto soil, using about one gallon of diluted ferment per 10 square feet of bed space. Work it into the top two to three inches of soil with a hand cultivator or rake if the ground is soft enough, or simply pour it on and let winter precipitation and soil organisms incorporate it naturally. The clay particles will work their way into soil pores, carrying their microbial cargo with them, while the dissolved nutrients begin feeding cold-adapted organisms immediately. For established perennial beds or areas where you cannot easily work the soil, apply undiluted ferment as a top dressing using about one cup per square foot and allowing it to slowly infiltrate through freeze-thaw action and precipitation. Around trees and shrubs, apply a ring of diluted ferment extending from the trunk to the drip line, using about 2 gallons of diluted ferment per inch of trunk diameter. The deep root systems of woody plants benefit tremendously from the improved soil structure and mineral availability that clay ferment provides. Container gardens present special opportunities for clay ferment application. Mix one part finished ferment with 10 parts potting mix to revitalize containers between seasons, or, you know, top dress containers with 2 to 3 tablespoons of undiluted ferment monthly through winter for plants that continue growing. The confined space of containers means the effects are concentrated and dramatic. I've seen winter salad greens in ferment treated containers outgrow the same varieties in untreated containers by 3 to 1. So, the true proof of clay ferment's power really shows up in spring, when you start working the beds that were treated compared to the untreated areas. Ferment-treated soil comes out of winter with structure that's noticeably improved, 
It's just more friable, drains better, but still holds moisture more effectively. The color is usually darker, which, you know, indicates increased organic matter and humus content. Most dramatically, the biological activity is just explosive as soon as the soil warms above 50 degrees, while untreated beds need several weeks to rebuild their microbial populations after winter dormancy, ferment-treated beds are already teeming with active diverse organisms that are ready to support plant growth immediately. Plants installed in spring into ferment-treated soil establish faster, showing more vigorous root development and stronger early growth. Disease pressure drops noticeably because the robust beneficial microbial populations outcompete pathogens and produce compounds that suppress disease organisms. Nutrient efficiency improves dramatically. Plants show deeper green color and faster growth even with reduced fertilizer inputs because the biological activity makes existing soil nutrients more available. Over multiple years of winter clay ferment applications, soil quality compounds, each year building on the previous year's improvements until you have soil that approaches the legendary fertility of century-old gardens. Beyond the garden proper, clay ferment revitalizes lawn areas, supports fruit trees and berry patches, and can even restore damaged or compacted soil in neglected areas. I've used it to rehabilitate construction-damaged soil, to improve heavy clay that was nearly unworkable, and to build water-holding capacity in sandy soil. Each application adds to long-term soil capital, creating improvements that persist and build year after year. Your winter soil health revolution starts with mixing your first batch of clay ferment this week. The process is straightforward, the ingredients are accessible and affordable, and the results will fundamentally change how you think about winter soil care. If you're ready to transform your garden from the ground up and join the growing community of gardeners who understand that winter is when the most important garden work happens, subscribe to the Living Soil Lab where we're constantly exploring techniques that deliver real, measurable results. Share this method with fellow gardeners who are ready to stop accepting mediocre soil and start building the kind of living, vibrant earth that makes extraordinary gardens possible. Here's to winters that build rather than deplete, and springs that start with soil already primed for abundance.